What's up my beloved human beings? It's been a tough time to build this Trumpeter's Amiga 27 Flogger D in 148 scale. The model has a lot of fitting and accuracy issues and I really wanted to smash this thing against the wall. Luckily I managed to somehow finish the main assembly and the bird is ready for painting. It is also a very important part because I'm going to use AK's first gen acrylics for the first time in full scale painting. The first impression was positive so let's check how these paints work on the model. Before the main painting I took AK's extreme metal to spray the rear part of the fuselage along with the top of the fin. I decided to do it now because it's easier to mask these parts at this stage. Trumpeter favors Mr. Hobby Paint specifying which colors to use, but it's easy to find their substitutes in AK's range, which is now quite large and covers many hues. I'm going to paint the D scheme with blue 9, which wears 4 part upper camouflage and 1 color on the lower section. And these are paints I'm going to use. The first color was a mixture of 80% of sand yellow and 20% of white as Trumpeter suggests. The paint was thinned in about 70% with the dedicated thinner. So let's see how it sprays. The first two minutes were very optimistic with very smooth spraying and beautiful richness of the color. Then the nozzle got clogged. As first I touched it with a cotton stick soaked in the thinner which helped for a while. Then some part of me asked have you added the airbrush flow improver? Airbrush improved what? Replied an another part. Okay, I'm mentally very good. It's just a sarcasm. As a Tamiya and Mr. Hobby Paints fanboy, I've never used anything like the flow improver. These paints, tinted with Mr. Self-Leveling Thinner, simply don't require this, but AK's first gen do require. So after two drops of the airbrush cleaner, the paint started to be sprayed very smoothly. What's the difference between the flow improver and the thinner? Despite the obvious fact that the cleaner is to clean the gear, it is also more aggressive, but once we add it into the cup with the paint, it works in the same way. Now it's a good time to suggest you subscribing to my channel along with hitting the bell icon. Thanks to it, you will be gently alerted once I upload the next video. If you like my videos, you can also click the like button below. It's a solid sign for YouTube that people like my content and it may be suggested to more scale modeling enthusiasts. I have to mention about AK Thinner that does a fantastic job with leveling the paint and allowing it to dry almost immediately. Once I finished this part I used for the first time, MRP masking patty, this grease-free flexible compound allows you to mask the surface with various shapes. What's also very important and can't be used many times after painting, so I highly recommend to be equipped with a similar one. The only thing to learn is how to tear it to pieces. Don't do this slowly because you will end up with a glutinous sticky string. It's better to do this in one decisive move, like this. The second color was RLM79 Brown Grey. I thinned it a little bit more than the previous one, added the airbrush cleaner and the paint was smoothly through the 0.2mm nozzle. Just look how the color is rich with the pigments. Some of you may ask why I decided to switch from Tami and Mr. Hobby acrylics to AK. Well, I built my models in my 3 room 60 meter square apartment. Even though I live alone, I've been looking for ways to reduce toxicity and fumes from my environment. That's why I decided to give these paints a chance, because they are non-toxic and odor free. Despite of ventilation or protective masks, using alcohol resin acrylics or what's worse lacquers, in space where you live it's not a smart idea. The third and fourth color was a mixture of 50% of forest green and 50% of interior yellow and forest green from the bottle. 
I was much closer to find the sweet spot between thinning these paints and smoothness of painting. My previous experience with water-based acrylics wasn't very fortunate. I used mixed paints while I was painting a staggering AMK sphere in 148 scale. Despite poor quality photos suggesting that everything went well, the model was covered with an orange peel effect. After notorious nozzles clogging and spraying 5 or 16 layers of paint, I decided not to use them anymore. I know there are some guys painting them successfully with good effects, but they aren't my cup of tea. AK first gen acrylics seem to be way better. The surface after painting is matte, smooth, without any unwanted distortions. Just like that. Now let's do some brush painting, because they are advertised also as perfect for this kind of work. After putting them on a wet palette and thinning with tap water, yes, a little bit too much of this, I managed to paint bombs, brackets, wheels, landing gear struts, bay doors or other stuff. The layer was also very smooth as well as easy to apply. Maybe soon I will paint the whole model with them using only a brush. What do you think about this idea? It will be definitely something like Return to the Past when I painted my first miniatures as a kid only with a brush, but using old and not very good humbrels. Let's paint the lower part with a mixture of all blue and pale grey. But before this I had to unify the surface with anti-glare black. It's a very surprising color, being in fact a very ink-like dark blue. Being honest, this step was unnecessary because AKs are very rich with pigments and bright colors can totally cover in two or three layers in a very dark surface. Nevertheless, this is the experience gained and it's priceless. The mixture of all blue and pale grey was about 3 to 1. Unfortunately, the trumpeter didn't suggest the required ratio, so I had to figure it out on my own. I managed to find this shade identical with the one in the photos. Please notice one more time how rich with pigments are AKs. Now is a good time to see how these paints deal with removing of masking tape. Most of water-based acrylics are very fragile and you can damage them even during peeling the tape. These ones are solid. The tape, along with masking putty, was coming off without any paint cavities. It's a huge advantage for me.
Next, I had to seal all my work with gloss varnish. I decided to use the dedicated one from AK. Why not my proven XF22 with Mr. Self-Leveling Thinner? Well, I didn't know if it reacts with the paint layer. I could melt it or damage. So I mixed the varnish with the thinner and started spraying. Unfortunately, this varnish should be called not very glossy. Because two solid layers left the surface more satin than gloss. What's my verdict after this very first impression? Well, I'm positively surprised. I think they can connect two separate worlds where non-toxic odor-free paints act mostly, yes, mostly, like alcohol resin acrylics, such as Tamiya XF, Mr. Hobby H series or AK Real colors. What's more, they are good for both brush and airbrush painting. Nevertheless, do not expect them to act like lacquers or previously mentioned paints. They need a little reset of your habits if you have used Tamiya or Mr. Hobby before. So let's play with decals. As I mentioned in the first video, they are very well printed and registered. Unfortunately, they didn't stick the surface like there were no glue underneath, so their application may be challenging. Luckily, I have Microset and Microsol decal solutions which are obligatory for every aircraft scale model enthusiast. It's hard to express how good these solutions are when we use them together. You can set decals on basically every type of surface and it doesn't matter if it's curved, rounded, flat, irregular, etc. Its application is easy. At first we put the blue one on where the decal will be placed. Once the decal is applied and all air bubbles removed, we smear it with the red one, which melts the remains of the carrier film, works like a glue and helps to conform the decal to the surface. Then it's good to leave our work for a couple of hours and let the magic happen. In case very thick decals, we may put also two or three more layers of microsol. It doesn't react with the paint and is friendly for our sense of smell. Sometimes it may look a little bit dramatic like here, but once the decal along with the surface dries, there are no stains. Now let's talk about the external fuel tank. Trumpeter suggests to paint it with the camo skin, but I decided to be a rebel, painting it in aluminium. There are photos of mix with these parts painted with bare aluminium. I don't know if it was a laziness or curiosity how first gen metallic paints act like, but I sprayed the natural finish color. And yes, these paints definitely are not extreme metal, so Proven. Yes, proven. I only post shaded the tongue with steel color and I can call this chapter done. So my friends, the model looks now like a clean toy. And of course, in the next episode, I will weather it. Because it's a Soviet Russian machine, it will receive a very harsh treatment. Before this, please enjoy the result of my work and some shortcomings. Don't worry, I will hide this horrible seam line behind the fuel tank. Being honest, I didn't know what to expect from the first gen acrylics. Definitely, I'm not delighted with them, but I am happy. In about 90% of the satisfaction, where 100% is to be staggered. Definitely, I will use them for my upcoming models so you may expect more materials about them. If you don't want to miss them, you can click subscribe button along with the little bell next to this. Then YouTube will let you know once I share my next uploads. Thank you for watching my friends, enjoy your modeling, enjoy your other activities, stay safe, stay fabulous and see you soon, bye bye.